Hey guys, welcome back. It's BRB Bricks, and today I'm bringing you a brand new Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be turning this photo into this. I'll be showing you how to make the Mando fly, as well as put a blaster bolt flying and some flames coming out of his jetpack. And of course, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But with that out of the way, let's get into the Photoshop tutorial. So I'll be starting off today with one picture with the figure in it and one empty shot that doesn't have anything in it. And that's so that I can merge the two together and it'll look seamless. The trees have moved a little bit with the wind but that's not going to be a problem today. So I'm going to start off today by going to the empty shot and taking the opacity down just a little bit below halfway. And that's so that we can see the layer with the figure below it. Now I'm going to click on the mask icon down here. And I'll go over here to the brush tool. And what that's going to allow us to do is to paint away the areas that we don't want. So I'm going to set the brush to something that's sort of hard and that size is pretty good I think. Now if we crank the opacity back up you can see that all the bricks are gone and just the minifigure is left. Now I'm going to go back with a slightly softer brush and just paint around the areas where it sort of didn't blend right with the background layer. This is going to reveal some of the brick base that I just masked away but that's alright. We'll go back and touch it up in just a second. With a smaller brush I'll just come down here and I'll paint away all the excess that we just put back on. This will need to be blended with the background too. So I'll just get that over and done with. And that has taken away some of the legs, so I'm just going to paint them nice and crisp back on. So there we have the floating Mandalorian. Now I'm going to go over here to the pen tool and we're going to try and draw some flames for his jetpack. So if I come down here and just drag a handle out, the curve just makes it look a little better. And now we'll create a new layer and go up to filter, render and flame. And these are the settings that I've used, number 4, multiple flames, path directed, and the length set to 250, the width at 250, the angle at 90 degrees, and the interval set to 50. You can also use custom colour, so you can set that to whatever you want, but today I'm just going to stick with the default orange that they have. You don't need to go into any of the advanced settings for this tutorial. So I'll click OK on that, and there we have it. So I'll drag that over into the spot where I want it. 
we'll just go back to the pen tool and hit delete twice for the two points that we plotted because we don't need them anymore. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask away everything that I don't need. So now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to make the blast bolt. So I'm going to select a brush size that's sort of close to the size that I want the blaster bolt to be and the hardness to 100%. And this is up to personal preference, how long you want your blaster bolt to be. But I think I'm going to end up with mine just there. I'm going to call this layer blaster bolt. And then I'm going to right click on it and click duplicate layer. This is command or control J for the shortcut. I'm going to do that twice. And then on the first layer, I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just set it to 10 pixels. Hit OK and go to the second layer. This time I'm going to do the same thing, but go to 25 pixels. And for the third layer, I'm going to do exactly the same thing again and set it to 50 pixels. Now I'm going to come down to the layer below them all. Go down here and click solid color. And I'm going to set it to black. Now with the black selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on the top one, right click and select merge layers. Now I'm going to go up to the blending modes here and I'm going to hit screen which is going to take out all of the black in it. Now the black allows us to hit command M which brings up curves and to adjust the colours. So I'll select red here, and I'll just drag that up a fair bit, because that's the colour of the blaster bolt I want. Now I might go down into the greens, and just pull some more magenta into it. And go into the blues and just add a little bit of yellow, to get it back to being more of a red colour. If the kingdom is overthrown, meet me at the cornerstone. I know that I can't be without you. So I'm happy with that, but you can go into the hue and saturation by hitting Command or Control U and just making some finer adjustments now. The love that you give will be there to guide you. So it's looking a little purple down there, but that's just because of the blue on the speeder. But now I'm going to go to a new layer and I'm going to do the lens flare. So down in the description, I'm going to have the website to download these brushes. They're really useful. And I'm going to click on flare three here. And you can just play around with whereabouts you want it, the size and the rotation. I think that's a good size, but I'm just going to rotate it a bit more so that it's level. And that looks good to me. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the blaster bolt, but we don't have to do the blur this time. So once again, right click and merge those layers. And then Command or Control M to bring up the curves. As we wait for the smoke to clear 
And we watch our dreams appear I know that we can rise together This vision that we share is ours Together we can touch the stars And then we're just going to set that to a blend mode of screen Cause when it's all over The love that you give I'm going to do is with the fire I've noticed that it's looking a little bit weird so I'm going to put a Gaussian blur on it that's a little bit intense I'm just going to turn it down to about there I think is good and this is just because the fire isn't completely in focus in the photo so we don't want it to look like it is now I'm going to go into my finder window and I'll have a, a link in the description for where you can download this picture it doesn't work unless you open it with Photoshop first and then you can hit command C to copy it make sure you've got layer 1 selected and come back into your other picture and hit command V to paste I'm not exactly sure why it doesn't work just to drag it in but maybe someone can help me out with that in the comments but with that in, now I can create a mask and just take away where it doesn't belong. So now I'm going to select all of the layers and I'm going to duplicate them. Click OK. And now I'm going to merge those duplicated layers. And I'm going to convert them to a smart object so when I go up to the camera raw filter, the changes aren't permanent. Here I can make lots of adjustments and it's pretty similar to Lightroom. You've got all your different categories of things, but first of all, I'm going to go and change the green primary to a more yellow and the blue to a more of an aqua. And this is giving you the orange and teal look that's very popular at the moment. You can adjust the red, but I don't usually do that a lot. So I'm just going to leave that thing on zero. Back in the basic correction, I'm going to turn up the texture a little bit. And one that's really useful is the clarity. I'm really liking how this area of the image is looking at the moment with the explosion. Now I'm going to darken the shadows a bit. But then bring up the black so I don't lose too much detail. Now I'll play around with the highlights and the whites till I find something that looks good. We'll just add a little bit of sharpening here. And then I'll play around with the HSL adjustments. So now that I'm happy with the picture, I'll hit OK. And there we go. You can see the before and after of the adjustments. But I'm not liking how this area is up here. It's just turned a little bit weird with all the filters. So I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to put a Gaussian blur on it. I'll just leave it there for a second. And now I'll just mask away all the parts that I don't need on it by first clicking invert and then I can paint on 
all of the areas that I do want. With a final adjustment to the Gaussian blur, it's looking much better now. I'm just going to sharpen up some of the areas. But that's the image done now. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So if I scroll down here, I can show you the before and the after. And wow, what a difference that has made. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And of course, drop a comment below if you've made something like this yourself. And tag me on Instagram if you post it at BLB underscore bricks. But that's all from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.